Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Good evening, everybody. As Arthur mentioned, my name is Julie McMurray, and I am the regional manager for the Central Regional Office of the Alzheimer's Association. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, um, I'm part of the Massachusetts New Hampshire chapter of the Alzheimer's Association with our main office in Watertown, uh, regional offices in Springfield, Raynham, Worcester, Bedford, New Hampshire, and Lebanon, New Hampshire. And our mission at the Alzheimer's Association is to enhance care and support for people that are living with Alzheimer's, their caregivers, their families. We are also uh, one of the largest funders of research. So I'd love to be out of a job someday. I truly would. I've been in this field for over 20 years. I've been with the Alzheimer's Association for almost 12. Um, and we also try to educate people on ways to reduce your risk for de uh, developing Alzheimer's disease. Um, one of the, I think the most important things if you leave here tonight knowing is that we have a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week helpline accessible no matter what time of day it is, you will speak to a human, um, whether it's two in the afternoon, or two at night, uh, or two in the morning, excuse me, you will speak to a clinician that can help support you, guide you, talk you through um, some of the, the concerns that you're seeing and point you in the right direction. Um, to give you some of the statistics about um, Alzheimer's disease, um, there are currently over 5 million Americans living with Alzheimer's disease. Certainly that is an increase compared to 20, 30, 40 years ago. People are living longer. Age is the biggest risk factor. And um, by mid-century, 2050, we will be looking at over 11 million individuals living with Alzheimer's because our baby boomers are our biggest population. Every 60 seconds, someone develops Alzheimer's disease. It is currently the sixth leading cause of death. And one in three seniors die from Alzheimer's disease. In 2013, 15.5 uh, million families and friends provided over 17 billion hours of unpaid care that was uh, valued at um, $220 billion, okay? So how many of you here forget? Right. Forgetfulness really is part of normal aging. You know, we live in a very fast-paced world and we get a lot of information coming at us. Um, we have a very hard time turning off. We think about the number of TV channels that we have access to compared to 20 years ago. We have a lot of information and so yes, we are going to forget. The concern lies is when that forgetfulness interferes with normal day-to-day -day activities, okay? So normal age-related memory changes include slower recall than when you were younger, more difficulty recalling information like new, wor new uh, people that you just met, uh, particular words, having more difficulty with multitasking, and having more uh, difficulty overlooking unimportant information. So what is dementia? Uh, for people that know me, I could speak on, for hours. Um, on Alzheimer's disease and dementia, but dementia in and of itself is not a disease. It really describes symptoms. Um, so those symptoms include memory loss, problems with language, increased confusion, changes in visual and spatial relationships, poor or decreased judgment, problems with thinking, planning, and organizing tasks, changes in mood and behavior, and changes in personality. So these are some of the warning signs, okay? Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia. It's estimated about 70% of all people living with a dementia diagnosis, uh, it is of the Alzheimer's type. It's important to also note that there are some illnesses that are, can cause those dementia-like symptoms, but they are treatable. 
They include um, brain tumor, a urinary tract infection, a thyroid condition, depression can mask the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease, okay? Uh, medication side effects or medication uh, interactions, okay? So it's, that's where it's so important to get a good diagnosis to determine what is causing the changes in your loved one's memory. So the irreversible um, uh, dementia are Alzheimer's disease, the most common, vascular dementia, which accounts for about 17% of all dementias, Parkinson's um, disease, Lewy body dementia, and frontal temporal lobe dementia. So in general, um, they all have very similar characteristics, but there's usually a characteristic that or two that differentiate itself from the other types of dementia. So Alzheimer's is very progressive. Um, vascular dementia, a person usually has a stroke or a mini TIA, they have a decline, they plateau, they might have another uh, TIA, they decline. Um, Lewy body dementia, a person may have more uh, falls. They also may experience some hallucinations and delusions. Frontal temporal lobe dementia, a person has um, a, a flat affect um, and they have uh, more compulsive, um, obsessive um, uh, issues. So why is it important to get a diagnosis? If you see some of these early signs that we just talked about, it's really important to have a conversation with your doctor. Certainly the goal is to rule out some treatable causes of the changes in one's memory. Um, certainly getting an early diagnosis, a person can have access to other treatments. Um, can plan for the future. It's so important with early um, diagnosis, a person has the ability to take control and put things in place on how this disease is going to affect them and their loved ones. Uh, treat health and stroke related uh, risk factors. And diagnosis can help expand medical support. Certainly goes beyond your primary care physician, possibly a neurologist, as well as a psychiatrist or a psychologist. And um, it allows people to get involved with research. Research really is the key to finding a, 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 a cure or a means of prevention. We have a program at the Alzheimer's Association called Trial Match. It literally um, connects people to clinical trials in your area. And they're not all drug related. Some are prevention trials, some are diet trials, some are just caregiver surveys. Um, but I have cards here and if you fill one out, it just allows us at the Alzheimer's Association to call you to get some more information and at that time, if you're interested, we can connect you. Um, just to go over a couple of the services that we recommend, everything we do for families is free of charge. The helpline is key. Uh, we really can educate you on getting a diagnosis, where to get a diagnosis if your doctor's not listening to you. Um, we um, also can do a one-on-one -on -one care consultation where we sit down with families and we listen to what their situation is and then we can go over specifically what their needs are, highlight those needs, and um, connect you to community resources. We do multicultural outreach. We have a program called Medic Alert Safe Return, which is a Wanderers Alert system that is a nationwide program. Uh, we also have over 220 support groups in the state of Massachusetts for caregivers. We also have some for people in early stages, um, as well as young onset um, support groups and young onset dementia is a type of dementia that affects people under the age of 60. And we do a lot of public policy work, both uh, state level and nationally. Um, and again, we, we do a lot of research. Um, I'll be available at the end of the program to answer any questions, but I want to turn it over to the next person. Thank you. And before the Bay Path folks start, I just want to emphasize a couple things. First of all, people inevitably come to a presentation, they come to a seminar looking to learn some specific things. And what I try to tr focus people on is, it isn't so much what you learn right now, it's the people that you meet and know. You really should talk to Julie. And if, if there's one, two or three takeaways to come from here, one of them is 
to get the, in, the contact information from them. And if you have any more questions, call them. Just call them. Right? They are there. They are there 24 hours a day. They're really interested. The second thing is the trial match program. There, ha, there, is, there are now a, a few ways that folks have uh, discovered, that scientists have discovered, to at least find out whether you have Alzheimer's before you demonstrate symptoms. But they're not great and they're extremely expensive. MRIs, there is some, they, they can kind of see some brain deterioration before you start showing dementia. So really right now, in terms of the research that's going on, the only way that we can find people to, to, to test, right, to see if there are treatment therapies or drug therapies or anything else that can slow the dementia, is by finding people who are showing symptoms early on. So the trial match program that, that Julie is talking about is just crucial. If, you've, if, you, if, you, if you think that you're early stages, if you have it, it may not save you. It may not save you. It's late at this point if you already have dementia. But it may save me, so I'd really like you to do this. It may help a lot of people in the future, and it's kind of what our only kind of possibilities are. And the, the, just the third thing is just, once again, if you're worried about this, Try to get a diagnosis and try to get a diagnosis from someone who does a lot of this and talk to your doctor about that. If he's a, a, a primary care physician who is, does not do a lot of this, talk to him about that to make sure that you get the right diagnosis because what, what kind of disease you have really affects your chances of success in treatment, what kinds of treatments you sh should really have. So uh, Nancy Stevens from Baypath is going to talk to you about the variety of their programs that are available, they're available to all seniors, but they have a real special application if you're in this situation. They're really important programs. They are not the nursing home programs. They are the kind of very early, early stage dementia, uh, to, to help you and your family face early stage dementia issues. Nancy.